Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is ET122 Digital 2. Today we're going to discuss the last of our shift registers, last of our basic shift registers, uh, and it's a parallel in, parallel out shift register. As the name implies, data comes in one side, and just comes out the other. And how do you do this? It's pretty simple. I'll make that a little better looking. Basically, it's immediately available as soon as it's loaded. And again, these are all clocked together. So it's given a load command. This data goes into their respective D inputs, and it's immediately available respective Q outputs, okay? So real simple. Um, again, just think of this as, let's use a bus example. Let's use a tram example. You know, those trams that they have at Disneyland, where there's a bunch of seats all available, and a bunch of sunburned tourists get on one side. That's parallel in. Everybody gets in. And as it gets to their destination, everybody gets off. Other side parallel out. Um, nothing too special about a parallel in parallel out shift register. What is special is this guy right here, 74195. This is a four bit parallel access shift register, but uh, it's not just limited to parallel in parallel out action, it is pretty universal in nature in the fact that it has a um, serial in on it just like we discussed with the 74165. And if you just give it enough shifts, in this case four, you could just use Q3 output as the serial output. Therefore, it's serial in as well as parallel in, and it's serial out as well as parallel out, depending on what mode you, you use it in. And so how this guy looks, is it's four bits. So here's our loads, our data ins, and here's our outs. And what you do is when you give them a load, put a zero right there. These guys go in, they're immediately available as a parallel out. So that's parallel in, parallel out operation. Obviously there's a clock. Um, so basically it's giving a low active low load. The next clock pulse comes along, I should say. Let's say that's zero one, zero one. Next clock pulse comes along, zero one, zero one. Okay, so that's in its plain old vanilla parallel in, parallel out mode. Um, there are other couple things that we should discuss about this guy. Well, it's going to clear. That's an asynchronous clear. So give a zero on that guy, it clears everything out. So we go ahead and do a zero. Regardless of what's happening with the clock, what's on the data? That's on the output there because active low clear doesn't matter what the clock's doing. Um, there is the serial input, and this is actually two inputs. There's a J and a not K. Okay, we have been analyzing these shift registers as if they were D flip flops. Well, in this case right here, this right here, this J not K input is the input to the first stage flip flop Q0. So if you want to set it, 
you know, a normal JK flip flop, you got to give this a one and a K, you got to keep it a zero. But since that's not K, you got to give it a one. So that's a serial input for stage one. And that can be, depending on how you put this here, you can set it or reset it. Um, you have to, uh, that's, uh, that's your, basically your one door there. Okay, and like I said earlier, if you go ahead and give this guy enough, to, um, oh, I forgot to tell you about this, the multifunctionality of the load. So if you want to use it as a serial out, there's this thing here. There's an active low, which is a zero. But if you give that a one, that's shift. So shift load is the same pin. So load, if it's a zero, it loads these guys. If it's a one, it shifts the data to the right. Okay, so we load, we go ahead and let's say we load zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Then we make shift one. And next clock pulse comes along, everybody shifts right one. Next clock pulse comes along, everybody shifts right one. Next clock pulse comes along, and we've cleared that registered. Well, not really, because that's that zero. If it was a one, just to make sure, I'll give it one more clock pulse to clear it out. And while we're at it, let's just do a timing diagram of this guy right here, because it is such a cool device and very universal. Okay, here we go. There's a, here's the inputs for our 74195 4-bit parallel access shift register, which is we know is a more of a universal type device. And um, oh, forgot to put the J and not K inputs there. One second. Here we go. Okay, so we are starting off. What are we starting off with here? First off, we got these guys hanging out here on the data inputs. D3, D2, D1, D0 has one one. 0, 1 on it, okay? And we are starting off with active low clear right here. So what are our outputs? Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. It is clear because it's been cleared. Okay, uh, notice what's going on here. Shift load. Uh, it's high all the time. So all it's going to do when it's high, it says it's going to basically shift the data. Okay, so next clock pulse, and it's positive edge triggered. Our first clock pulse has come along. There's no J inputs. There's no K inputs. So it's going to shift the zero to the next one. So Q0 goes to Q1. Q1 goes to Q2. Q2 goes to Q3, and Q0, another fresh zero is loaded into it. But now, next clock pulse comes on. There is a J input, there is a K input. And like I said before, um, excuse me, not K input. So that is the input to the first register. So this guy goes there, okay? And we're still in this shift command. So Q00 was shifted to there, Q10 was shifted to there, Q30 was shifted to there. Next clock pulse comes along, this guy right there, Q0 1 is shifted to Q1, and so on and so forth. Next clock pulse comes along, which is this guy, and by the way, there was no J and K input on that one. Um, Let's shift it again, making sure I'm accurate here. Okay, but this next clock pulse comes along. Ordinarily, we would be shifting, but check this out. We've got an active low load. What is being loaded onto our Q uh, outputs? These D inputs. So we got our one, our one, 
R0, R1. So I should actually delete that line right there. So there's no transition. OK, so then the active load goes away, and we're right back to shift land. And now this is just going to behave just like a serial out shift register, which we've already done the analysis. OK, so I'm going to draw the clock pulses right there. So by the way, I've abandoned that whole delay thing right now because you should understand what's going on here. It's basically it's the shifting. Um, you don't really need to know what it is, uh, what it was at that present time. Just understand that there, it was reading it, and now it's shifting it next clock pulse. So this one goes there. That zero goes there. This one goes there. Next clock pulse. One. We're putting zeros on there. And finally, we got one, zero, zero, zero. And then finally, last clock pulse there, we've cleared our shift register. How many did it take? It took one, two, three, four clock pulses to shift, uh, to clear our four bit shift register. Okay, so parallel in, parallel out shift registers, and we used a universal device, the 74195, with a bunch of different inputs, notably our shift and load, and our combined serial inputs. And the fact that we were using an active low load, we basically loaded our 1101, what was on our D inputs at that time. And otherwise, it was behaving just like a serial out shift register. Okay, so we'll go on to bi-directional shift registers.